guys, it's Brant, and I'm back with another unboxing video. And it's been a hot minute since I've done an unboxing video, and because I just haven't really been buying that much stuff. And it's been a hot minute since I've done a record shopping video, or a in my head go shopping video, because I haven't done a whole lot of shopping. But one of the things that I made as a New Year's resolution this year was to try to go back and buy some memorabilia of some form of KISS merchandising or merchandise memorabilia or KISS memorabilia that I had when I was a kid. So I didn't really know where to start. I mean, I've got some things on my punch list like the Miko dolls, some bubblegum cards, you know, the, the Don Russ Series 1 puzzles, the Kiss My Face makeup kit, um, Kiss trash can, posters, uh, notebooks, I don't know if I said notebooks yet already, but just things that I had, just getting on eBay and getting on different things and trying to find different things. Well, if you saw, if you, well, I don't know if you saw the video I did with Emily Graziano, but she showed some magazines and if you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out. It's in my playlist. But one of the magazines that she had was the Grooves number no. 7 special. And I lit up like a kid at Christmas when I saw it because uh, I wanted to, something like that. So I started looking for magazines and started looking online. And I ordered some magazines. I ended up finding two magazines that I'd like to get. So I've got them right here. I kind of teased on my social media a little bit about what did I get. What I ended up getting was two magazines from when I was a kid. And um, they came packaged so great. These were from two different sellers. Nice thick packaging. You can't even bend it to be a magazine. This is a magazine also, and this looks like what you would ship an album in, which I was really impressed with this seller. Uh, and these are both eBay sellers, and I was really impressed with the packaging from both of these. Uh, but we're going to open these up. You already know what they are from the title. Uh, I can't remember which one's which, so I'm going to be surprised when I open them up. So here we go. Trying to hold it up where you can see. And I want to go ahead and tell you, uh, not trying to spoil alert for anybody who haven't seen the inside of these magazines, but I am going to show the inside of both of these magazines. I'm going to flip through, and you'll be able to experience these magazines along with me. I'm going to show them, and then I'm going to set them up here on my table, and I'm going to flip through them so we can enjoy them together. So, once you see what they are, if you don't want to see the inside of them, stop the video. Okay? So, this first one is... Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh, wow. He threw in some extras. That is so cool. I'm going to have to thank the eBay seller. Because this is the purchase. The Kiss Grooves number seven. And y'all, I am an eight-year-old kid all over again just even holding this. It's amazing. Just even holding it, guys. I mean, it's, it's just going gonna, gonna to take a minute. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm almost crying, y'all. I can't believe I'm holding a, a grooves in my hand. <laughs> oh, well. And uh, he sent me uh, this. Uh, wow. Kissaholics, number 14. The Kiss Collector Zine. And, oh, wow. I'm not going to... Well, I might flip through this one. But this is basically... Um, it's Kissaholics. Great Moments in Kistory is on the back. 
And then I was just talking about some of the things inside of it. It's just got some things like it's got an interview. It's got a spotlight on the Kiss Army kits and some fan art, which I always loved fan art. I remember seeing fan art in magazines when I was a kid. Uh, and then it's got, oh, this is really cool, guys. It's got what's in the Kiss Army. Um, I may have to end up doing a little special just on this book alone and maybe scanning some of these pages uh, and, and putting this out there. It's got the Kiss Army kits and the years they're from. Yeah, this is going to be a later video. This is That's what he just threw in extra. And here is a magazine called rag uh, these were extra guys this is totally unexpected these are extra this is from april 1996 and basically just it has inside of it <clears throat> It's just got KISS stuff inside of it. Like this. And then on the back it says, The Greatest Rock and Roll Lives On. It's 95.5 FM. WGLO. Central Illinois Classic Rock Station. You Chicago people can probably chime in on, on that right there. So those are extra. So that's very, very, very cool. I'm definitely going to have to um, get that, get with that seller and thank them and see if they've got anything else. Uh, now I got to get my uh, my knife, my trusty knife for this one. Cut away from the body. I've always said I'm going to stab myself on camera one of these days. Now, I know what this one is since that one's already... Yeah, and look at this, man. It's just like all packaged up. And then they've got it again on a piece of paper, on a piece of cardboard. And then the magazine is on a piece of cardboard. This seller even emailed me and asked me if I'd gotten it yet. And I said, and I said no. And he said, well, you should get it. I'm tracking it, and it's in North Carolina. And then I said, cool. And I said, I just hope it, I don't care if it arrives late. I just want it to arrive okay. And he said, oh, it will. I package really well. And I'm going to have to write him back and tell him thank you because he did package really well. All right. So now, here we go. And... <laughs> I'm a nine-year-old kid all over again. Oh, Y'all, I need a moment. Mm. <sighs> yes. Kids Meets the Phantom. The official magazine. Guys, I've not held one of these in I don't know how long. So I'm going to take you on a journey with me today through these two magazines through these two magazines right here and uh, it will be I'm trying to get the window window glare off of that one there yeah, we go through these magazines and it will be a religious experience taking you through these magazines will be a religious experience for me so let's take a look at them all right, guys, here it is. And uh, you're going to see my shadow over here because I've got the camera in a really weird sp space here. It had to move some things around. I'll probably post a, maybe a behind-the-scenes camera shot of <laughs> what it takes to uh, make a video like this, at least as far as with my budget and my setup. But here it is, Grooves number 7. And... So um, we're just going to kind of go through this and see what Grooves number seven is all about. And I'm going to tell you some things as we go along in my remembrance of it. All right, on the first page, 
this right here. Such an iconic shot. So beautiful. And I believe that's on one of the Donruss cards, if I'm not mistaken. But just some of these images are just burned into my head. This shot of Ace here. And the shot of Paul from the Destroyer era with this fire hat on. This shot of Gene. The picture of Ace off the top of the Empire State Building. And the picture of Peter down here. I always imagine, you know, of course he's singing Beth. But just such great photos here uh, just to start off and you see the table contents we're going to have a table of contents we're going to have an exclusive interview with gene shooting stars then they get in some non-kiss stuff and then the kiss calendar which i'll show later and then it gets uh, an exclusive interview with ace and then kiss meets the phantom of the park so let's go on and look at that guys just look at that. So amazing. I can't wait to read these over again. I'm going to I'm going to read them A Night with the Vampire, <clears throat> not the Demon. A Night with the Vampire. And just this awesome shot. Gene's eyes rolled back in his head. It's just so awesome. Early picture of Gene. Groove's exclusive interview. Speak for yourself, Gene. Goes on. More pictures of Gene. More interviews. This this shot here. These are just such awesome shots. More on the interview with Gene. These shots of Gene here are so awesome. The shot of Ace here. How they cut his legs out down to Gene. This is from a Don Russ card. Just so awesome. <laughs> Y'all going to hear me say that a lot. It's just so awesome. Now, I loved this spread right here. The hotter than hell. The picture of them after the show. Ace and Gene together. Gene split, spitting the blood. The blur of Paul in performing. That's just great. These are pictures I used to just stare at when I was a kid. I always liked this picture down here of Paul kissing or getting ready to kiss. Paul was always the romantic. And I remember looking at this picture of Paul here thinking Paul looked really weird because of the way his hair was and Gene looked great, but these images are just burned. When I see this, it's just like eight-year-old Brant laying on the floor Listening to Kiss, looking at this magazine, and this is long. I mean, this is still the Gene interview. So I'm looking forward to going back and reading this so much. I remember loving this picture of Peter. I always thought he looked almost very feminine in that picture. And, um, of course, Ace, and, of course, of course the band with the, the on tour Gene and Paul is the fireman, not or Gene. Gene and Paul is a policeman, rather. This right here, this hands down is one of my most iconic pictures. This burned in my mind of Gene when I was a kid. Is that one right there? I mean, these other pictures are great, but when you turn that page, your mind goes straight. Your eye goes straight to Gene. Just the blood coming off the tongue and all down his chest. So, rock and roll all night. Such great pictures. The one of Peter again, and then the one of Paul. Gene here. Still the interview with Gene going on. I used to love this picture. Gene's face. Ace's face looking so coy. Even Paul looking so great. I mean, look how much fun they were having. That was early days. Hotter than hell, maybe, era. They were just having such a great time. It's a shame it all went south. But yeah, I used to love this because Gene's not got his makeup all the way painted in yet on that one. That's just really cool. Him biting Peter's hand. That's from later on, Love Gun era.
and then sold out at your nightstand or new st sold out at your newsstand. Uh, yeah, Kiss Meets the Phantom, a great gift idea. And we'll be talking about that in just a moment. We'll segue to that. And then you have the non-Kiss stuff. Patty Smith, Meat Loaf. Um, I remember I don't even think I... I'll probably read this now as an adult, but I think I just never read these pages. I'm a little pervert when I was a kid, so I used to look at her boobies probably. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a kid for you. Uh, but I'll probably read through this now just because of... You know, then it's got the disco scene, the Tramps and Sylvester and the Village People, which I have a Village People uh, double album on uh, vinyl. <clears throat> I used to always think this was cool. A little rock and roll with good skates in Central Park. Roller skates and rentals. Thought that was cool. Very New York. That That's, a, that's an advertisement in this magazine. Then record reviews, Double Vision from Foreigner, uh, Peter Gabriel's album, UK Squeeze's album, Bob Dylan, Street Legal, Millie Smith's Get It Out Your System, and then ABBA. ABBA's such a great band. I love ABBA. ABBA. <clears throat> I remember thinking that that was Paul without makeup when I was a kid. Because, I mean, look at it. Could be. But it wasn't. But uh, it certainly looked like him. So let's see what's next. Do we get back into Kiss? No, not yet. More Rock Wars. Fleetwood Mac. Bee Gees. Bee Gees apparently won. And then Elvis and the Colonel. Because Elvis had recently passed away. So I, I, still, I was still listening to Elvis at this time. And then New Wave, the Ramones, the Rizillos or whatever. Blondie, Deborah Harry. I remember I was a big Blondie fan. Talking Heads before they made it big in the 80s. Mick Jagger. I wouldn't have known who these people were. I lived in my own little bubble. I probably skipped through it. Oh, I'm getting that old smell. The Grooves Fan Club. The KISS National Headquarters. I used to think that was cool. I remember that. 99X FM carved out of the apple. And then I used to love this picture right here. This picture of Ace sitting in the lawn chair. Just lean forward. This was during the time when the rumors was flying around that Ace was a chick. Because he never showed his chest. Um, and very feminine features up here. You know, just Ace always had very feminine features. I used to love this picture here. I didn't know what facials, that kind of facials was back then with the uh, cucumbers over the eyes. And I used to love this, pic this picture of here tuning his guitar. The Mystery of the Spaceman Uncovered. The Kiss jet up there. I used to think it was so cool that they had a jet. These pictures are so great. Ace in the back of the car. Love that picture. Early makeup with the mother shirt on. I need to get me one of those mother shirt from Click T Shop. ClickTshop.com, shameless plug for my boy Ed over there. Uh, he sells those shirts. Ace Frehley, just awesome, awesome. I love the Love Gun costume. It's great. Uh, speaking of Click Shop, they actually sell costume tees. So you can get costume tees. You can get Gene with the uh, chains. You can get Ace with the uh, lightning bolt from the Elder or with the X, you know, Galactic, galactic thing there. You can get it from uh, his shop. He's designed some pretty cool tees. God of Thunder. I love how they're using the titles of albums. I love this picture. This picture here. I used to have that big, huge poster. Kiss with the Geishas. Uh, Kiss with their wives. Uh, at least Peter and Ace. 
with uh, Jeanette and Lydia or Linda, however you say her name. Bodyguards here. I used to think, I didn't realize these was bodyguards now. You have to remember, this was pre-internet and stuff, and the bodyguards were the celebrities back then. But I remember thinking that this was Peter, that that was a bodyguard of some sort. And this was Peter, and he didn't have his makeup on, so he had on glasses. It's funny things that we think. More kids. Sorry if I keep hitting the camera. I'm trying to, if you see how I'm doing this, I'm basically laying over the camera stand. More Ace. It's really, it's really kind of impressive that the two big people that are featured in this magazine, as far as these big, huge interviews, is Ace and Gene. It really is. No Paul. These days it'd be Paul and Paul and Gene. But um, you might have a page about Ace or Peter. But yeah, I love this picture here. I wish Paul, probably Paul wishes he could do that sometimes. The picture here of them on the street. Love this early picture here, Peter, with the dagger. They were so dangerous back then. Back in the early days. They were so dangerous. They didn't really know what they were doing. They were just making it up as they went along. Great pictures here. Ace with his face and the thing that basically moisturizes it or warms up his pores. Hell, I don't know. This is a great picture of Ace. Good pictures here. Paul jumping. Gene kicking his boot. Gene with blood on his mouth. Just great, great pictures. Kiss Alive. Awesome pictures. Early picture right there. Notice the bandit makeup. I don't remember ever catching that when I was a kid. It probably... I don't know. I don't know how I missed it. I always thought Gene's... Cut out here looked weird because he don't have his ball on top of his head. I remember Peter's drum set. I was just envious. I was so envious of Peter's drum set. He had so many drums. I think this is from Paul Lind, maybe. I just love this shot of Ace here, shot of Peter, Gene, Paul. I just all, all, just so, such great, great photos. And then Paul gets his little do towards the end here. Paul, Kiss meets the Phantom, Groove's Exclusive. I used to love that picture with him and the cookies in his mouth. And that's a great picture of Paul. You see that he used to kind of shadow. He'd put a sh little shadowing on the side of his face. Come down like this. The Kiss of Your Face makeup kit actually talks about that. Coming down. And he doesn't go along his entire jawline either. He kind of comes up from here to the base of his ear. And he that's how he gets that slimming look on his face. He doesn't follow his jawline exactly. If you look in pictures from the side, you can really see that. Uh, this film is somewhere between The Beatles and Batman and Star Wars. I think it's a great mixture of the three. <laughs> the Beatles... And Batman and Star Wars. I used to love this picture of Paul with the little Japanese doll. I used to think Peter there looked so high. Probably was. And Paul's face just kind of got cut off here. Him with the big ball. Paul's got big balls. Or a big ball at least. <clears throat> Make sure I'm keeping things in the shot here. And then at the end... Brooke Shields, sassy. She was big at the time. Every guy had a crush on Brooke uh, when they did uh, Endless Love or and also Blue Lagoon. Whew, Brooke Shields. Mm -mm. But yeah, this this great picture of Ace and this picture of Kid, Kiss uh, and this picture of uh, Peter, Gene, and Paul. Peter's makeup is not, he's not even got his makeup all the way on. He's His nose is not on, his doesn't look like his makeup's fully filled in. Get sassy. And last page, Peter Chris. Love, love this picture. I used to sit and stare at that picture, looking at the detail of Peter's makeup. So he had it down pat at this time and uh, just did such an amazing job on it. 
And then the last page is basically talk about other Grooves magazines they've done, one with Queen and Aerosmith and the BGs and Fleetwood Mac and John Travolta. And you know, all that stuff is uh, cool now. I love all those bands now. I'm a huge John Travolta fan. And then the back that I could still see in my head, in my head, get it, um, that I could still see before Emily even flipped it around, the picture of Gene and Paul on the back. So just totally, totally great book magazine and uh, I'll go ahead and show you the poster right now so this is the poster and I'm gonna try to I'm looking down here at my monitor because I want to try to get this all in I was happy as I could be that grooves my grooves uh, magazine included this poster basically what it is on the front side it is a 7879 poster that's a calendar. It started in September because I think this came out in August. So it went through September of 78 until, until uh, August of 79. And I was mistaken. There's nothing on the back, which it would have been really cool if there was something on the back. But there's not. But the cool thing about this one that I love, it's been hung up. You see that? I know it's probably, you can see it's kind of torn here. But this has hung on somebody's wall. And I just think that is so great that it is hung on somebody's wall. I'm trying to get back as far as I can. I can't go too far back, but I'm going to try to show as best I can the entirety of the poster. So, <clears throat> so there it is. And I'll come in for a little bit of close-ups at the top. It's got a um, top. It's got like a that looks like maybe Paul Lind from the Paul Lind special is what it looks like. It's got a picture of Gene, and then it's got a picture of Ace, and then down at the bottom, it's got a picture of Peter. And it's got a picture of Paul. I'm trying to get that in there the best I can. Yeah, picture of Paul right there. So, yeah, so I'll see if I can step out of the way here. And barely almost get it all in there. It's a good size poster, decent size poster. Um, I've got some extra poster frames around the house, so I don't know if I'm going to keep this in the magazine or if I'm going to pull it out and put it in a poster frame and put it on the wall. And it will constantly, forever, be 78 and 79 thanks to this magazine and the poster inside of it. So now let's take a look at Kiss Meets the Phantom magazine. Okay, now it's time for Kiss Meets the Phantom, the official Kiss magazine. Scoop, super scoops from the first Kiss movie. And honestly, I wish there would have been more Kiss movies. I wish there would have been an Elder movie. I think that would have been amazing if there would have been an Elder movie, but alas. So let's check this book out. Uh, it was two fifty in uh, 1978 and I neglected to mention how much the grooves was it was a dollar ninety five uh, these things have gone up in value because I paid quite a bit more for both of these um, say a hundred two hundred percent more <laughs> but anyway so uh, kiss meets the phantom let's get into it So now, guys, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that I, this is going to be like seeing this book all over again for me because it has been so long since I've seen this book. I'm probably going to be starstruck at some of the pages because I'm not going to remember every page. This is so awesome here. Of course, uh, when they're in the auditorium and they get ready to fight the ninjas, Gene busting through the wall. 
Kiss busts out in their first full-length feature film. So Kiss meets the Phantom, got the confetti falling, Paul reflecting the laser, Peter jumping, or the stuntman jumping. I think it's weird that they put the stuntman in the magazine. So, great pictures up front. Kiss meets the Phantom. Starring. It's got the different... Got Gene, Peter, Ace, and Paul. Then it says who else that stars in it. It has the seats there. Those are cool. Wouldn't it be cool to have those seats? They'll have some of these props, the actual props from this. There is the meeting with Deborah. Anthony Zerb or Zerbe. I don't think he did an awesome job. He did the best acting in the movie. Gene behind the cameras, where he wants to be, and also in front of the cameras, where he wants to be. Try not to miss any pages going through here. They saved some money doing some of this in black and white. Great pictures. Kiss the Talisman, the secret source of Kiss power. I love that. Race would do that. Did the thumbs to the side and teleported. Peter, great shot of Peter there. Gene, great shot of him. Good shot of Paul. The plot thickens. What little plot there is but it's still it's amazing good picture of Gene there we're back to the black and white kind of non-glossy pages here it's like they alternated them but still such iconic ace on the little motorcycle thing there so iconic some shots just before they get their instruments back their instruments miraculously appear after they'd beaten the robots. Paul having beat his robot. Printed that in red. That's kind of weird that they printed that in red. Well, it looks like red was one of the colors they could have used. So I figured they'd, hey, black and white and red. So let's put Ace in red. The Chamber of Horrors. So great. Kiss the Conclave. The Ceremony of Innocence. Gene stands accused. Now, I remember this is one of the shot, first shots you saw of Gene's boot from the bottom. And I remember just looking at that boot and seeing that it was just kind of, oh, I say, okay, I see. It's a, it's a piece that fits on there. And, yeah, you, know, you know, so it was like peeking behind the curtain just a little bit. Gene's clean. Ack! Rawr. A pussycat. Ace just looks so badass dressed in that. Autographs. And I don't know if those autographs look quite legit. I've heard somebody else mention that too. I don't know about that. Paul with the fans, you know, of course, hopefully they would have took time to meet all those fans and not meet all of them, but greet some of them um, that came down to see them. It's a free concert. Then you have the close-ups, not in color, sadly. Ace Freely, Paul Stanley. It seems like they cut corners a little more on this than I remember. Peter Chris, Gene Simmons. Kiss in the Dark, the Monstrous Mystery Tour. 
Ah, this is the work of devil. The blue screen. I remember not knowing what blue screen was. And I remember thinking when I was a kid, I didn't know what blue screen was. So I was like, oh, wow, they're really high up in the sky. The sky's blue. You know, didn't know. Good shot of Paul. Looking all dapper, ready to fight somebody. This amazing shot of Paul. One of the most iconic. I remember that one well. Great shot. Back to color pages here for a while. Awesome pay, awesome photo of Ace. Good shot from the horror, Chamber of Horrors. Good shot of the from the talisman. Seeing seeing the talisman. <clears throat> the gene after he busted through the wall. Chills, thrills, monsters, special effects. Ace shooting sparks. Ace shooting smoke. <laughs> sparks and smoke. That was special effects. Then super songs. Love Gun, Dr. Love, Shock Me, I Stole Your Love, Rock and Roll All Night, Christine 16, Beth, God of Thunder, Black Diamond. Were those all in the movie? I don't think they were. Somebody can correct me. Somebody who knows it front to back. Kiss versus the Apes. You used to think this is so cool. A little circuit board under there. And I was a little circuit board nerd. And I would go on to actually build motherboards for a living. Uh, one of my first jobs out of college. And since moved on to IT stuff. But uh, remember we had to, one of the first circuit boards I had to build. It was kind of a radio, transistor radio. We had to build it from a project board. And it looked kind of like that. Ace, they all lose their heads over you, demon. Ah. It's a great picture. Peter looks like he didn't want to be there, like he was phoning it in. Everybody else is like, you know. And I know Ace didn't like the production very much. He didn't like hurry up and wait. And I used to work in the movies. I used to work for a production company based in Hollywood that rents motion picture equipment and... uh yeah, and I've been on many sets uh, back in the early nine, early and mid '90s, and uh, it was a lot of hurry up and wait. Uh, nice little interview with Ace here. Ace sitting down playing the guitar. And little interview with Gene. Good pictures. Little interview with Paul. Great picture there. I used to love stage shots and live shots and stuff. And a little, I was going to say, and Peter got one page. But no, Peter got, uh, I used to like seeing Peter behind his drum set. And this is my favorite uh, Peter costume, hands down. Something wrong, Demon? I'm not sure. Something's amiss, me bucko. Oh, spare me this. Ah. I know, my acting's horrible. Kiss versus Kiss. The towering rock stars tackle their own twins. And, <laughs> man, the stunt doubles were horrible. You know, we had Black Ace, and, I mean, the, the, stunt, the stunt doubles, they were just not good matches at all. And sometimes they weren't just stunt doubles. Sometimes when Ace or Peter didn't show up, they would put their doubles uh, in makeup and and uh, yeah, they would they would play and act, especially during I think some of the live some of the live stuff that wasn't really so live. So yeah, so check this out. This is awesome. Kiss collectibles. So we have the Kiss radio. These things were nine fifty back in the day. These things are freaking ridiculous now. I saw one. Somebody had it for sale. It wasn't even that great a shape, and it was $350. Uh, the Kiss posters. I had all four of those, and I had the one that has all four of them on it. They were $250 each. Not bad for a poster. And let's see. We have our Kiss logo buckle. was $5. Our Kiss belt buckle was $6. The four belt buckles, the enamel finish buckles, they were 6 
You can enlist in the KISS Army for $5. Then they had the KISS buttons that were just dollars each. And then they had the signature stick pins that were $5 each. KISS Live 2 shirt. The KISS solo album shirt, which I had. The KISS notebooks. I want some of those. The KISS keychains. Some of these things, the KISS necklace, some of these things are ridiculous prices now. If you can find them at all, they're ridiculous. And there's your order form. You could have ordered them all. I think this is funny. Sold out at your newsstand? Uh, we have one. <laughs> Sold out at your newsstand? It's a great gift idea. I guess, well, I guess if you wanted to buy one for somebody for Christmas. Order extra copies here. Then, then sealed with a kiss, have Ace here, have Gene here. Then sealed with a kiss, have Gene here, Ace here. Such a close-up picture of Ace. You really study their makeup. I used to really, really study it. Paul's beside him. You catch that little rose tattoo. Then Gene and Peter. I always thought that was just so sweet. Peter just looks kind of sweet in that. Gene's looking like, get off me. And Paul, starlight, star bright at the end. And then Gene up on his pedestal. And just such a great, great crowd shot. And then the back. Heads up, flaming youth. Hither cometh thy destiny. So yeah, um, great, great book. Both of these, it's just really awesome to have them in the collection. They will go back in their protective cases and they will go on my KISS uh, shelves uh, in, with my other magazines until I can eventually... I have a couple others I want to collect up, and then I think I'm going to put them in a big frame that'll hold four album, four uh, magazines. I've got one from another one from this era, and I've got one uh, from the Eric Carr era, which still had makeup on right after Peter left the band. Uh, I got that I want to uh, add to it. So yeah, so that's it. That's all I've got for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed going through the magazines with me and recapturing some of my childhood. And like I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to be diving deeper into these things, reading those articles again, reading those interviews again. And it's just going to be so cool to do. So I don't know what's coming up next month. I've got my eyes on some things, but I don't have anything secured or purchased yet, but I will. Before you know it, there'll be another video just like this one. But it'll be a different piece of KISS memorabilia. Or two. Or three. But maybe just one. But anyway, I'm Brant within my head channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.